In this video, I discuss several different measures of changes in welfare due to a price change. This is what a price change looks like. Um, thinking about this is our initial, uh, original UO utility, and this is going to be our final utility after the price change. Therefore, what we're doing is we're increasing the price, and we're this individual is consuming bundle B instead of bundle A after the price increase. I reproduced this picture over here as well because I'm going to use these two graphs to illustrate two different types of changes in welfare due to an increase in the price. In lecture 10, I showed how one would decompose this price change into an income effect and a substitution effect. But we could decompose that price change by finding a budget line that's on our old indifference curve but has the same slope as our new budget line. This point is labeled C for being the compensated point. If we want to find the substitution effect, one way to do that is after the price, we just compensate the individual until he has the same utility as before the price change. Now, one thing that we didn't think about when we were talking about the income and substitution effects was how much money do we have to compensate that person? Well, it turns out that the amount of money that we, we have to compensate this individual, make him feel just as well off as before, is a measure of the welfare change due to that price increase. And the place where we can find compensating variation on this graph is in the difference between the income on this budget constraint and the income on this budget constraint, the compensated budget constraint. And so this would be our compensating variation. Another way to think about it is that it is the difference in the expenditures between A and C. But C costs more than either A or B. So one way to think about this is that this compensating variation is the difference in the expenditure function at A and the expenditure function at C. So that's compensating variation. That's how you'd find it on a graph. And this will actually turn out to be a pretty useful uh, useful equation for compensating variation. Well, notice we have two indifference curves here. Another way to compute the welfare change is we could just go to this other indifference curve and do the decomposition just the other way. So we go to the final, in, final utility and we ask ourselves how much money would we have to, would this person be willing to give up to avoid the price change? What that means is he would be able to keep his old prices, but how much income could we take away so that he would be just indifferent between that and just accepting the new price change. So that will be a point on the new indifference curve. I'll label it as a bundle E. This blue dotted line here is going to be parallel to the original budget constraint. And the thought experiment here with equivalent variation is a bit different. The way we're thinking about equivalent variation is that this individual, at, we ask this individual, we threaten this individual, we say, okay, we're going to change the prices on you. How much are you willing to pay to avoid this price change, um, or this price increase? And this individual's like, whoa, 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 hold on, that price change will make me worse off. Don't do it, I'm willing to pay X dollars. In other words, he's willing to move his intercept on all of the goods down to this point where it's going to be just tangent to or his new indifference curve. And so that is going to be where we find equivalent variation on the graph. Another thing to notice is that E costs less than B. So we get a similar formula as to like right here. So those are two measures of welfare change, both of them on an indifference curve and budget constraint diagram. 
And these two measures are uh, an important way to measure consumer welfare. Uh, one of the key advantages of these is that they ask us how much money is this person willing to give up. We don't have to measure something like U0 minus UF. That would be the welfare change in, in terms of utils. But we don't see utils in the world. We see dollars. And we can figure these things out if we just think about what bundles people would actually consume. And so these are measurable. We can observe something like these in the real world. So it turns out that these are useful ways to represent how well off people are made by changes of uh, prices uh, in, in, the, uh, in the market. And it is very useful in terms of understanding the effects of policies. It's, un it's useful in understanding the, uh, the effects of just having a market in the first place. And to understand these changes in prices um, and how they translate into how well people are uh, how well off people are, um, that's, that's really fundamentally a major contribution of economics.